Hey everybody, welcome to this next video. So in this one, I'm gonna talk about Kubernetes with Vitesse. So if you have a lot of infrastructure at your organization, it's very likely that you're using some additional software to help you manage and deploy the things that are running on this infrastructure. And it's very possible that Kubernetes is what you're using, right? It's a very popular framework for doing these kind of things. So Vitesse has support for running on Kubernetes. In fact, Vitesse was originally made for Google Borg. So one way to think about it is Vitesse was made for Kubernetes before Kubernetes even existed. Um, but PlanetScale publishes an operator that you can use to get Vitesse up and running in a Kubernetes cluster. And so I'm gonna show you just a little simple example of how to do that in this video using Minikube. So let's jump in and take a look at the terminal. Now, what I've done is I've actually spun up another EC2 instance that has a little bit more resources, so 8 vCPUs instead of 4 and 16 gigs of RAM, so that I have enough resources to give Minikube so that it can run this whole cluster locally just fine. So, I need to do a couple of things to be ready to start doing this. So, first of all, I'm going to go over to the operator directory. And in here, there is the operator YAML file and also the 101 initial cluster which is basically like the configuration version of what we were doing. Actually, it's set up a little bit differently, but basically a really simple cluster that you can get up and running in a Kubernetes environment. So a few prerequisites that I need to get installed first though. So I need to get Docker installed because you need some kind of container environment to run this with. So I'm gonna paste a couple of big commands in here because I don't wanna to have to type them all out on this video. Uh, but there's resources for this on the respective, you know, Docker or Kubernetes websites. You can also uh, look down below if you're on the PlanetScale website, and I'll probably have some of these instructions uh, in the text down below. Okay, so that is installed. The next step is to actually install Kubernetes, get that installed. That one goes pretty quick. And then I also want to make sure and have Minikube installed because I'm going to do this basically just in a local environment using Minikube. I'm not actually gonna deploy this to a service like EKS in this video. So that's left as an exercise for the user. Okay, so that's all there. <clears throat> a couple of other little things. So I need to make sure my current user gets added to the Docker group on this computer. So my user is Ubuntu, add to the Docker group, and then basically relog back in. And then I have to go back to dev, Vitesse, examples, and operator. Okay. So I'm back here. Next, what I'm gonna do is get Minikube started up. So I'm gonna start it up, give it four uh, vCPUs. I'm gonna actually give it 10 gigs of RAM. And this machine has enough resources to do that with some spare left over. So it's gonna build the environment. And then after that, I'll apply the operator and I'll apply the 101 configuration. Sweet, it finished. So the next step is to actually start things up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use cube control to apply first the operator. And then after this finishes, let me show you what get all shows. So cube control get all shows a couple of things, but there isn't actually a full Vitesse cluster, right? There's no VT gates in there or anything. Uh, there is a Vitesse operator pod and a couple of other things, but we need to actually get our cluster running. So to do this, I'm gonna apply that 101 script from before, right? Initial cluster.yaml. This will apply really quick, but it will take time for the whole cluster to actually come online. So if I say cube control get all, it now shows a bunch of stuff. And let me focus just on the pods for a minute here. So on the pods, some of them are creating right now, some of them are pending. And you know it can take a little while for everything to actually spin up the way that you want it to. <clears throat> but if you look in here, you can see that there are some VT gate pods, uh, some VT tablet pods, some ETCD pods. So a handful of pods that it just takes time to get up and running. So let's check on the status of those again. So running, pod initializing, a couple of things are happening here. Uh, so it take a little bit of time to get this all working. But as you can see, if you're using the operator that we have and, and the, you know, these example scripts make it pretty easy to quickly get up and running with an example. But then of course, there's a lot more work involved in getting this customized the way you want it and deployed upon your infrastructure and all that. So, okay, looks like we're getting a crash loop back off, which isn't the best sign, but it may be able to self recover. Let's see how this goes here. Run this a little bit, okay. 
So thankfully, uh, several of these, so these are all running, that's good. The VT tablets are running, VT admin is running, and the operator is running, so what do we have? We have a problem with the gates right here and with VT orchestrator, okay? So there we go. So it was able to recover, took a couple of restarts there, but now everything is running and I'll do another get all instead of just get pods, right? Because there's also like some services that are running and things like that. And from here, you could kind of test around and play around with your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so from here, right, I'm not gonna actually show a lot more detail about how you would do this, right? Because if you were gonna do this on your infrastructure, you know, it depends on are you using uh, Amazon EKS or are you using Google's infrastructure to deploy this? What do you want your cluster to be configured like? How do you want it to be managed? What are all of your policies? So those are things that you would have to decide when you're getting all of this set up. So just know that it is very possible to deploy this on Kubernetes. And that's actually what we do at PlanetScale when we spin up a Vitesse cluster for you is we're doing it in a Kubernetes environment. Okay, so this is a little bit of a shorter video, but I appreciate you sticking around and watching. In the next and last video in this series, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what we at PlanetScale do and what we kind of build on top of Vitesse and why you might want to go with a PlanetScale managed database rather than rolling your own with Vitesse. So stay tuned for that.